What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Everyone's Different Podcast. I'm your host, Tristan Jass, with my co-host, Young Trench. And we have a very important podcast today, man. This, this podcast right here means so much to me, and I know so much to my family. We have a great guest today here, my boy Nick from Venice Ball. What's going on, bro? Brother, it's good to see you. And you too, T. Hell yeah. Yes, sir. We're both T's, Tristan and Trench. Yes, right. mm-hmm. Man, how you doing, bro? Double What's going T's. on? What's going on? Everything's good, man. Welcome back, T. I know, I know you 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 you're familiar with the with the HQ when you guys first pulled up here. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, how, man, we're getting long? ready for another epic tour, man. It's, it hasn't stopped since we met, and I know it hasn't bro. stopped for you since. So it's it's a rare occasion that we get to sit down and reflect and chop it up Mm -hmm. man people don't even understand what's going on right now like everybody listening you guys gotta understand i was this dude nick had me out here when i was 17 years old i think i was in high school still yeah Mm -hmm. took a couple years you first went viral i was like man keep doing it yeah and i was like you kept going i'm like bro T, you want to pull up to the beach? And it's like, I don't know. I don't think my parents will let me. <laughs> and then he came to one FaceTime, and now we FaceTiming with grandma. Or was my it mom. Your mom's first. My mom. And then who, who else came on that call? Somebody else went on that call. I don't even know, bro, but I did need to get permission. Permission. And it took a few calls. It took a few calls. I'm like, yeah. yo, come, like, cool. We'll fly him out. Mm-hmm. You know, have a safe place to stay. I had to give, like, a tour to play. To say, yeah. hey, this is where Tristan will sleep. Cool. Yeah. But why yeah. Why did you fly me out? I got to ask you that. I mean, so in the summertime, we run to give the viewers the perspective, right? We, I've been running a basketball league in Venice Beach since 2006. Venice Ball, where the game never stops. From June to September, we run our league. And every summer is the platform. And every summer, I look to bring special guests, right? Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. you know, you look to the internet and, like, who's doing interesting things? And I just, like, right away, I saw, oh, this kid definitely has got something different going. He's got a different swag. He's got a certain style. And every summer, we invite three to five players to come highlight and showcase them on that stage and that platform. And that summer was you. I was like, gee, like, summer's young. We talked, we wanted to get you there when you were 16 because we have the high school showcases. <laughs> and I was like, that yeah. we couldn't make that happen. Yeah. We had to build the relationship and the trust. Yeah. Next summer, you're out here. And next thing you know, it's history, man. You're out here just... Taking yeah, taking over the stage. How, and now we're going on tour all over down the coast. Like, oh, how big even were you at that time? Bro, that was like, I probably just had crossed my teacher up. Didn't even have a YouTube channel. Didn't even, that, didn't even YouTube. have a YouTube Far channel. Just like super popping on Instagram with like the crazy 50, layups. 50,000, maybe 100,000. No TikTok. 50, it might have been like 50. <laughs> might have been 50. Yeah. yeah. For real. Oh, my God. 50 was a big thing then at the time. You yeah. Know? It's just like, it yo, was. There was no bat. There's like, there was no such thing as basketball influencers, mm-hmm. right? It was yeah. And this like, was like, what, 2017? Yeah. 2018 ish? Yeah. Somewhere yeah. in there? Yeah. I don't know. I can't do the math, I, bro. I, I mean, can't do the math. It's so definitely been like, years, bro. It's been like five years, but that was such an important part of my life because, and, and nobody really knows this. Because here I am in Kenosha, Wisconsin, trying to convince my parents to let me go to L.A. to some guy's house and let me stay. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, and like I'm trying to convince my parents. It's a very shit. foreign concept. And it's like who? And like, yeah, exactly. and they were, they were probably like, kind of freaking out. Straight like, ball. Yeah. Like, <laughs> exactly. And this is right around the time when I'm telling my parents, like, hey, I'm kind of like. So popping on the what was their reaction and they were like first like a little fearful like mm-hmm. oh they didn't they didn't, they didn't, nah, they didn't nah. you, they're like you're famous on the internet yeah, yeah. right yeah. my dad was like get the hell out of here well, yeah and they hear you're about to go stay some, with some like random dude that they don't know and they're probably yeah. like what the f- no <laughs> yeah man so <laughs> it it took a little bit of convincing but let me tell you man th- it was like if that would have never happened, mm. I would never be where I'm at today. Mm. And that's a fact. And I believe in that 100%. 100,000%. Bro, I pulled up to Venice Beach when I was like 17 years old. 
first time witnessing the basketball court on the beach. This is when the waves were on the beach. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The fresh, like, coat of paint. Like, yeah, and that's when we had the court freshly painted. Yeah. And yeah. I want to say that even before that, we pulled up on that Wednesday because the game was on Saturday. Yep. We pulled up to that Metal World Peace celebrity game. And, oh. you, and so you shut down. I think that was your introduction. Oh literally my. across the street. Like, we can, we can literally see the high school out the window. Oh. Metal was like, let's do a celebrity yeah. game. And he's like, can Bro. you help me get a couple guys down there? And I was like, Bro, I perfect can. timing, right? So that... I think you you hit some type of boomerang hot sauce move. Yep. Bro. Shit went we, really bro, wild. Wild. You went at it with White Iverson, who was just fresh on the scene too. Who yep. got who got his name at the beach, fresh out the draft. He was coming off of la- He was actually coming off of his first year's draft, so he was just up and coming. Yeah. I remember you guys matched up. You probably scored thirty. Had something like twenty. I don't know. It was. Yeah, I feel like I, rem- he went I remember. Crazy. You went crazy. He went crazy. I went crazy. We were going back and forth. But let me let just break down how this shit happened. Yeah. I pull up to the to the crib, obviously, yeah. and I had no idea what's going on. You're like, "Hey, Meta World Peace wants you to come play in this celebrity game," and I'm like, "What? Meta World Peace?" I'm thinking like, no way, man. You're like, yeah, just trust me. We're gonna go walk across he, the street. He had no idea because he didn't know who, you, like, he didn't know who you were. But mm-hmm. he was like, he trusted me because he's been playing in the VBL for two years. And I was like, yeah, he's that guy. He's like, all right, cool, bring him. Yeah, but he took me into the locker room. Meta, that's did, right. We were there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he did a interview with me live, almost like a podcast, just like this. Before Literally. the game or after? Pre-game. Pre-game. Okay. Asking me who I am, where I'm from, what do I do. I'm sitting down with Meta World yeah, Peace, off bro. Off the jump. Like. Off the jump. I'm still in high school. Everybody back home is freaking out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Freaking out, bro. And um, I just remember, you know, like f- having a feeling like I need to make a name for myself in this game. Hmm. Like there's a bunch of different celebrities in here. There's a lot of people watching. Um, I know I wanted to prove myself to you that I could actually hoop a little bit because you just paid this money to, for me to come out here. So I'm like, all right, it's time to hoop. So I match up with White Iverson, who's a very talented basketball player in the basketball scene, outdoor and indoor. Um, And yeah, man, just we I remember going back and forth for probably like six possessions where he hits a shot on me. I come down, hit a shot on him. He comes down, hits a shot on me. I come down, hit him with a crazy move. Bop, bop. Ba ba ba, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the crowd was just crazy, and that's that's when I think Meta World Peace was like, "All right, who the hell is this white yeah. boy mm-hmm. right here? Who is this kid?" You know what I'm saying? The young seventeen year old, and I'll never forget that shit, bro. That so, what were your initial thoughts? Because at the time, I don't think anyone really knew if he could hoop he could or not, because yeah, it was right. just trick shots. We didn't have YouTube videos to prove that he was cooking people. That's a fact. Definitely, I, I mean, I. I had no idea, but I love the energy that you brought. Like, obviously, it's like, that's my first initiation. Like, when I, if I meet somebody there popping, then I go to FaceTime. I try to get the true character and the mm-hmm. motivation because, like, I think I pride myself on finding amazing talent. But if the attitude and the energy and the is not there, it's yeah. like, I'm not going to waste my time. Yeah, it all right? has like, to Like, I can say it's like, it's like he, was, he was hungry, right? Mm-hmm. He had this energy. He's like, I, I want to do this. I love what I do. No, I know I can prove myself. And I saw that twinkle in his eye, so I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. he's the kid. So it's like, you know, everybody's like, same thing. It's like he's on the court. He's like, who is this guy you brought? Like, mm-hmm. he does just layups. He's just some 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 type of like gimmicky player. I was like, watch, and I boom boom boom. And I don't know who I'm sitting next to. I'm sitting next to BD actually, Baron Davis right there. And I'm just like, oh, Baron Davis, yeah, Baron, was there. Baron Davis. Damn. Was there. And I'm just like, watch. Wow. You know, I was like, I got my money on it. So you went crazy. A couple of days later, we at the beach. Back to back showcase. I got you in my glitter uh, official uh, uniform. You guys got to run some B rolls on that because we like, got to run some B rolls. Because like on I've that. been doing like cutting so fashion for for a minute, and so when I go to these downtown runs, I try to find like the most flashy. I'm like, let me do basketball couture and like let me design some things that people haven't seen on the court. Yeah, yet. we can do that at the beach and hopefully inspire a little different style. Yeah. to the game so i got you in this glitter suit we're doing a high school showcase i organized the game just for you i was like at that time we had a full schedule like let me throw in a high school game at 11 mm-hmm. 
and you bought out, and then I got you a second game, like in a in a in an unlimited division with like all the all the top guys with the adults and shit. Yeah, and I'm yeah. a youngin, bro. Yeah, it was tough. I was a youngin out there. And I, what was your? I don't. I, I can't recall that game. Like, like I know you went crazy in a high school showcase, and then yeah. the second game was a. Li- it was a little bit of a transition. No, it, it definitely was a a lot tougher for me because, and, and people. I feel like people don't understand. Like when you come to the beach, bro, all of these teams in the VBL are like legit teams. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's not like a high school. It's not like that, bro. Yeah. It's it's pro basketball on the beach. Right, like and then these, you got to adjust, right? Like, and you got to adjust because one side of the court is a little, you know, lopsided, and you yeah. got the wind that plays effect coming off the ocean. And, and I remember how sunburnt you came back. Oh, so that boy. it birthed sunburnt <laughs> T Jazz. Oh, pull up the photos. Uh huh. The, uh-huh. Tea, <laughs> the that, farmer tan. Uh huh. That was Fish one up. of the worst sunburns <laughs> I've ever had in my life. Yeah. That's that welcome to Venice, like, photography. It's just, mm-hmm. like, everybody gets it. You get this, this part yeah, of the but routine. I didn't realize, like, you know, and your girlfriend at the time, she's, like, telling me, like, hey, yeah. put on some sunscreen. We got to get you some sunscreen. And I'm, like, the sun's not even. It was cloudy. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't realize that the sun can seep through the clouds Snuck and all of a sudden hit you, bro. Yeah. I came back home that night to here to this spot where we're filming this right now. <laughs> took my jersey off, looked in the mirror, and was like, "Oh shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is not Welcome gonna come to Venice." <laughs> yeah, this is not gonna be a fun shower <laughs> because I am like Larry the Lobster mm-hmm. right now, bro. Like I am just red. It was and I'm, bad. You know, you know when you got sunburned and you touch yourself and you take your take your hand and your off handprints just and you just see a white ass handprint and it just slowly goes back red mm-hmm. that's Classic. when you know that's when you know man but yeah that was that was legendary man i like i can't even thank you enough thank bro you. for yeah. having me out here that shit changed my life love changed my I life mean, that's why i do what i do man honestly this this these are these this is the feedback and this is the love that's received it's like i was a kid in france Growing up in a town that had no basketball court. My mother and I, when I was 14, discovered the game through basketball catalog. We didn't even have basketball on TV. Mm-hmm. We didn't have basketball in my city. One day, I saw Michael Jordan thung out. I saw Sean Kent. I saw Shaquille O'Neal. You can break those backboards. They're shattering. I was like, I want to do that. So I got the little hoop above the door. I broke the rim. was in the first day. <laughs> I'm like, we need a real hoop. <laughs> we need a hoop. So we go to the store, get some cement, get some wood, and just like dig out a hoop. It's a, it's a gravel court, bro. And there's a tree in the middle and, like, branches all over the place. Damn. And nobody hoops in my family. Not my brother, not my father. There's, like, there's no basketball culture, like, like miles and miles away around me. There's one one court at the school that I play at, but it's under the soccer cages. Mm. So it's like at recess, you're playing soccer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so we build this court. Blah, blah, blah. I'm starting to get nice. I'm just playing one-on-one versus my dog on gravel. So you can imagine, like, the, the ball dribble yeah. weird so like yeah. right away you got to start learning how to shoot well yep and my ball my dog all he want to do is poke the ball get his get his teeth on it and just get all slobbery on it and the ball gets <laughs> filthy yeah and one day i recessed like i'm always the goalie i was the goofy kid like about 12 years old i'm like six two already no way so yeah i was six two at 12 i was tall early bro i sprouted like a little string that's that overseas <laughs> shit bro mm-hmm. hey they feed you good bro you lot, lots of vegetables man kids you veggies out there you know, and next thing you know, I'm getting scored a goalie, and you play until recess is over. So they scored a goal, and you go back to class, and you're hot. You're like, lost the game. You're like, ah. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I grabbed the soccer ball. I got up the food, the, the, the courts, I think, are like nine feet at the time. Just dunked the ball. I was like, for now, recess, we're playing basketball. <laughs> and they're like, all right. They're like, what the hell is basketball? Yeah, they're like, we're going to do that. So we had to learn the game, and I had to educate people around me how to play the game. So. So you were dunking at what age? I right off the jump, bro. Like probably like 12, 12 years old. Twelve. But it's nine foot ramps. Oh. Okay. I gotta understand. In France at the time, ten foot goals they they attached the lower goals. Yeah. So from from the jump, when I signed up for the team next door, is like we're playing on nine foot goals. So I'm going coast to coast dunking the ball. So yeah. My experience to the game like that feeling. 
You know, I mean, you started dunking a few years ago. Like yep. when I met you, you weren't dunking. No. You know the feeling that it brings out of you, even if you just. Mm. Mm, you catch a little it, dunk and you're like, ah. It's the yeah. emotion that, like, that's what sparked my interest for the game. Yeah. Really? I mean, the interest was like the magazines are like, man, this thing looks cool. And then I felt it. So to be able to be like fast track, like, you know, I'm almost 40 now. Like, I've been running this league for 18 years to be able to. Right, I'm a kid with a hoop dream, thinking I'm gonna make to the NBA out of junior college at 25 years old. I'm like well, JUCO red shirt, 25, yeah. ACL surgery, like broken ankles, like Definitely. broken wrist. I'm like this dude is like, but I'm still believing. I'm like, bro, I'm, like, yeah. I'm gonna make it to the league. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. But so to be able to be like to see like people like you that come through, right? Like you have a hoop dream, you came through, you took a unconventional route to your dream right which is yeah. not the nba which is the route that i chose to be able to see you guys like flourish through these moments is just like that's the that's the greatest feeling to be able to be like okay now you empower somebody to go for their dream and now you're inspiring thousands if not million mm-hmm. and that's the effect that we give to the world and that's i don't know you can't put a price on that that's, that's crazy bro I, I think we gotta backtrack a little bit so you're what city are you from originally because like i I need people to uh, know you have one of the coolest stories that i've ever heard of like yeah we need we need to start like and i don't really know much about it either so i'm i want to hear yeah like so where you're from and then bring it into 1984 san francisco my mother's going to school my father's working at a tower which is a tech company the originators of video games nolan who my father was working for at the time created Space Invader, which was the first video games. Oh, your pops worked. My on pops that? worked for that. Really? He, he brought video games to Europe at that time. There was a, it was a company of six people. Bill wow. Gates actually worked there at the time. Wow. Atari, remember the well, you know about Atari. Atari, Atari. yeah, of course. Atari, of course. So Nolan turned eighty yesterday, and it's funny we're going to Salt Lake like in three days. He's from Utah. I'm looking. I'm googling like yesterday, like. Most famous people in thing and it's like Nolan Bushnell. I was like, I know that guy. Uh, That's yeah. crazy. He lives down the street. Yeah. So they they met. My mother's nineteen years old. You know, it happens. Yep. <laughs> and now a little kid is born whoop, whoop. in San Francisco. They're both French. Yep. Next thing you know, I'm getting shipped out to Paris at two years old. Like I don't know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> My mom got two kids, a French kid and me, and we're you know she got to figure it out. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and then that's how I get to Paris. And then eventually we move to the suburbs because the city's a little wild and crazy for single mom in the city. Yeah. And we get to a town with no courts, no culture, no. It was cool. You know, it's yeah. like it's free. It's a little bit like Kenosha. It's like if you like Chicago to Kenosha, it's like you got space to roam around, ride the bike. Yep. You know, that's when I discovered the game. 15 years old, I'm back in Paris. Actually, 14 years old, I come back. 13 years old, I come back to America. And this is where, like, yeah, I'm from California. Yeah. Like, this is it. Like, San yeah. Francisco, I finally see it. Cause yeah. Like, this this is what it's like. You know what I mean? Like, chips, oil, Oreos, like, <laughs> pancake mix. On, you know, like, you eating all this shit. Like, that, we're completely foreign to it. Hell, right? yeah. yeah. Bro, Gatorade, like, all this. Like, we don't have none <laughs> of that All the processed stuff. foods. Bro, it seems like it's all there. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. And it's open bar, and it's all you can eat buffet. So, I'm at a Steve Lavin basketball camp. And this is where I get connected with coaches. My dad dropped me on a third day of camp, and he's like, figure it out. I don't speak no English. I'm like, Figure it out. Yeah, figure it out, bro. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I can't. Like, so what was what was the reason that you ended up coming here again? I mean, I, 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 it was a wrap. Every summer, it's like, bro, this is like, you took a fish out the river, right? It's like, I'm from California. Yeah. My whole family's French, but I'm like this is where I belong. Like, yeah. This is where the game belongs. Yeah. Yeah. This is where like, this is the land of opportunities, the land of the free people are more open minded. Like the energy is just different. So mm-hmm. I'm like, bro, like, you know, people in Paris is just very normal. minded. It's like, get to jog and thing. And like, I want to hoop. Like, mm-hmm. And I'm playing, you know, national level. I'm like top scores, top, top rebounder, top assist. I'm like, but I'm playing against French kids. This is the time we had no pros in the NBA. Like, Mm. Now we got pros, but like Tony Parker is just like a year older than me. He's like, he used to open my games, and I'm like, we had no reference to like what success meant in the in the game of basketball. Yeah. 
So, you know, and each, the chance I could, every summer I would come back from it, like, when are we going back to California? When are we going back? And my mom was like, well, I got a job on this shoot when I turned 16. And she was like, why don't we go over there? I got to got to shoot this movie for six months. She was producing family. She, she had just done commercials her whole life. And somehow she, like, hustled a project to produce a film just for me because I was just like. Because you wanted to get back I was, over I here. need to get back to Cali. And mm-hmm. she's like, she's wow. not about to let me go at 16, like, by myself. So she came back for me, and rest is history, man. Went to a French school, then around to score 40. Then I went to Fairfax, rode the bench the whole senior year. Yeah. Then Damn. I go to junior college, tore my ACL, and then started dibbing, dabbling, and DJing. And I'm like, man, DJing, that's cool, that's fun. But it's like, I love basketball. Yeah. Then really, like, dig into, like, Venice. I'm like the essence of the game, and I'm like, this is where we we could do everything here. DJ, yeah. music, MCing, party, basketball. Right on the Bring beach. Bring the kids right on the beach. People are already there. So I, I saw that early when I was like, even at 12, 13, people saw me play at the beach. It's like, I'm drawing big crowds. Yeah. Come watch me play. Blah, 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 blah. Like, oh, yeah, you good kid. Like, mm-hmm. it just feels good to be recognized for you again. I mean, there's no, there's no cameras out, nothing, but. And yeah. I was like, why don't, why don't we start something? And it stuck to it. It's like our first tournament, 2006, like Bone Collector shows up sick with it. Like guys that I grew up idolizing. Yeah. Keith Kloss, fresh out of the NBA, like Doug Thomas. I mean, monsters, bro. I thought I had the best team in L.A. Like it took me a whole summer, like sticking posters, like 50 courts around the city. Next thing you know, I got 16 teams in my tournament. And like we get knocked out first round. And like Damn. I'm watching pros play on like some – you know, I'm a kid, bro. I'm like yeah. 21 years old. I'm like, like, how the hell do you find out? But like, it's cool you're here. And so you yeah. started this whole VBL, the Venice Basketball League, like right on Venice Beach at around 20, actually 20 years old. So you've been running it for almost almost 20 years now. Bro, Se- you, you 16 years, 17 years. Oh, well, actually, 18 years this year. Wow. That is crazy. You Summer weren't even 18. like an adult yet, and no. you just had the j- you had the vision and the dream. Right. To, like, do this shit. At that time, were you even aware that you were putting something together or you thought it was kind of just, like, a yeah, one-time for, thing? It's for fun. Like, yeah. it, like my energy has always been like that. I was through the parties. When I turned 16 here, I realized there was no nightlife. 14 years old, you're in France. You're in clubs. You can order bottles and yeah. stuff. Like, it's fine. Nobody, yeah. like, you could go to the liquor store, order wine. You're, so you're partying I young. Already think, yeah, I'm telling my mom, staying in my friend's house, but I'm up all night, like. It just enjoying life. Yeah. And then you get here, it's like, like you don't got no fake ID. Or you go to house parties, people want to fight. It was just a weird energy. I was like, mm-hmm. okay, let me book a studio and throw a party. Like, yeah. I always, like, I enjoy bringing people together and see the the magic and chaos that comes from that. Like, mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. if I put a bunch of people in a room, I throw some tunes, and then see what happens, right? There's something magical. It, could, it goes up, it goes down. But something yeah. happens, right? And I think coming to L.A. As a, as a kid with, like, a lot of energy, sometimes it can be a little sterile. You're like, bro, this city's so big. You're in your car. You can't you can't figure it out. So, yeah. Wow, bro. And you – so you were a DJ, though. From what age to what age? Because I've heard some wild stories about Mr. Nick being – We'll keep it quick. I mean, it was a – it was a – it was a good part of my life. I don't know how significant it was on the, right, like the... The grand scheme of things. Yeah, it's like, you know, when I see you and I just see, like, the stuff that we achieved as as a team, right, from creating a space, a platform, people showcase as a highlight. You know, you put yourself out there, you put the little headphones on, pew, 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 you pick some good songs, mm-hmm. people feel it, girls love it, like... It was cool. I mean, I, you know, I got to travel. I see a lot of places, man. I traveled to Milano every... I was doing the whole Fashion Week circle. I would go from L.A. to New York, New York to Paris, Paris to Milano. They pay for my trips. I'd stay an extra few days, go hoop and <laughs> scout all the courts, you know? Stay five-star hotels, Living you know? Living the dream, Traveling man. Traveling Paris Hilton to... On private jets yeah, to but Las Vegas. Like, weren't weren't you Paris Hilton's DJ at one point? Not officially. I've DJed a lot of her parties. Like I don't I wouldn't say I'm I was her DJ. Like she had just dropped a record. Like I would play her records. If I was DJing at a club and she's coming in, like I'd play her records. Yeah. Just kinda yeah. <laughs> out of respect. I 
would I play the record if she's not around? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it was just, it was cool that she like, she thought I was cool. She's like, yo, you, you know, whatever. Yeah. But, so uh, she's like, yo, hop on the jet. We're going to go. We're going to Vegas. We're going to Cancun. We, you know. Bro. That's crazy, especially because at, uh, yeah, at right. that time, Paris Hilton was like today's Kim Kardashian. Low key, Kim Kardashian was like her assistant at mm-hmm. some point. That's yeah. what I'm saying. She was the first Kim Kardashian. And you were in that group, bro. I was in there, bro. And I was Vibe. in there. And I just like, I thought it was fun, but like t- a month and a half into it, it just got real empty to where like, all right, like what next? There wasn't a fulfillment to yeah, it for you. Yeah, there's just no, like, I yeah. just, I was still like, if you're partying till five, I'm at 6 a.m. on the beach surfing and then shooting the hoops with the OGs. That's mm-hmm. like, that's, that was always what it, kind of attracted me and fulfilled mm. me. It's just like the night, eh, party, drink. It's just like... Well, for me personally, like, I I don't understand how people can go out and party, like, every night. Get hammered every night and party. I could not do that. Some people have a different... Some people are built different, for different, I, I, I realized quick. I was like, I'm not built for that nah. one. I'm not built for that. I'm not, I'm not either, and I'm, I'm an not, artist, and, and I not, still... And I'm not even interested. In it's that just, life. You know, like, yeah. it was fun. Like, that time, I'm not regretting anything. At yeah. one point, I was playing junior college at SMC, and that's when they were like... They asked me on a Monday, you know, it was like, tomorrow, we're going to Cancun for a week. Like, you want to go? I was like, I don't know if I'm going to make the team. I'm like, kind of red shirt <laughs> on... Maybe I get the ninth spot on my junior college team, and I'm like... Fuck it, we're going. Mm-hmm. We're going. You can't pass I don't, up on I that. I don't say nothing, right? And yeah. I come home, I'm all 10. Like, six days later, it's like, yo, where the hell you been, bro? Like, we had six practice. You missed the game this weekend, preseason. I'm like, it's a long story, coach. <laughs> but I'm ready. Like, put me in the game. I'm about, what I got to do? We'll go to the track. And they're like, yeah, well. That's you crazy. Know, so, you know, I mean, you make decisions in life. But I, uh. Yeah, man. I mean, it's been a, it's been a beautiful journey, bro. To see to see it see it all come to life. Yeah. yeah, no, that's crazy. I just you know, I don't have a problem with going out and having a couple drinks or whatever, but I I cannot do the drinking shit every night. Mm-mm. I can't. And trust me, I've been in situations where like, yo, for two weeks it's straight, everybody's right? hitting me like, yo, right. we're going out, we're doing this. I'm like, bro, I'd rather like. I just don't like waking up the next morning feeling like shit. And I also feel like I got shit I have to get done. Right. You feel me? Yeah. Like I can't be going out waste uh, to me at, you know what I'm saying? Like when I hit probably, I don't know. I was probably like, even right now, like 18 years old until now, like, Shit, pop parties and shit. I don't even think when we met, like, until a couple of years ago, you didn't even had a, a drink. No. I think when you were 21, I asked you, it was like, you're like, I've never even tried. I was mm, like, no. I'm, I'm never, I'm never going to do that. No, I was very, I, w- I wasn't against it. Yeah, but you were like. But I would just rather be productive. Use that time mm. instead of partying to be productive. I mean, that's a great note. I mean, I think going away with that to be like. Like, for all the kids out there that's, like, trying to be great, like, you get in the way of your greatness. Whatever you're drinking, you're smoking, like, you might unlock certain level of creativity, but there's, like, you're also enabling yourself to get to your greatness. Get to your greatness and then enjoy the fruits of the spirit if you got to have a drink celebration or something. Exactly. So I wanted to bring it back to something because you said that when you were, like, 12, you built your own court and everything. So is that kind of, like, what got you inspired eventually to be building courts for people that didn't have them. Oh, like yeah. The question, Cause Chad. people, people don't understand you've built hundreds, thousands of basketball <laughs> hoops and courts. Mm-hmm. Not thousands yet. Maybe we inspired thousands. Yeah. I think when the pandemic hit, it was like, we took it to another level, but yeah, to bring it back. Yeah. There's a nostalgic feel to like, the birth of the game, right? Like my mother and I going to the hardware store buying these things. Mm-hmm. Like you got a dream, like like just like your mother kind of unlocked. She's like she saw that in your eye. Like you want to go to California to play basketball. This is what you love to do, T. And you're like, yes, yeah, right. Like mothers know that. Like it's like this is what I want to do. I have the poster. I've seen them do it. They can break the backboards. Michael Jordan's doing it in Chicago. Like I need to do it right here in La Salle San Clue, which is like there's like 500 people that live there. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's like I'm in a village, bro. And we're like, hmm. And so, like, moving back towards, like, 
the first court that we ever did was like 2015. I just posted it on my Instagram. If you guys don't follow, get to the Venice Ball page. We starting to get a little bit into the story. You know, it was like people just want to watch reels. Now I'm start kind of writing and telling the story of why and how we got here. So 2015, I go to Belize. First, like kind of unofficial vacation. Like I always say, like the only vacation I ever known was like basketball. Right, like I go to a place, Hell I do yeah. my work, but it's like the only thing that that I'm interested in is basketball. That's how I connect culturally. That's how I connect socially. Mm -hmm. Whether I speak the language or not, I could go anywhere around the world. Yeah, and be with the people and get the real experience. Yeah, of what that culture feels like. So I'm in Belize on the island. We go fly to Belize, then go down and call San Pedro. And as soon as we ride into hotel, we ride in a boat to a hotel. I'm just like, look to the left. And on the island, there she is, like a beautiful core. I just see two pillars, like, standing right there, right on the water. And the water is, like, teal, crystal blue, you know, like, coral reef. Mm -hmm. My head on the water, there's, like, fishes all, like, multicolor in there. I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to come back for you. Like, And yeah. we go to this resort, and it's like, yeah, I'm three days. I'm, like, two days there. It's, like, cool. Like, we relax, take a dip, you know, like, nice breakfast. Everything's pretty, nice linens. And I'm like, bro, I'm like. I gotta, I, gotta go. I gotta get to the city, mm -hmm. bro. And I get to this court, and this court is like covered in gravel. Like, right, they get a lot of hurricanes there. It's like Belize, the wind don't stop blowing. So, like, the, the court is like covered in like six inches of like kind of aggregated gravel and sand. Wow. So, these kids, as soon as I pull up, bro, like two like 10 year old kids, like, come on, come on, like, check up, check up, check up. And they're playing with this like warped, like, round ball. And I'm like, we heard so I catch the ball and like square up like like full slide the ACL almost comes off like <laughs> and I'm just like whoa okay all right let me just take the jumper next thing you know the wind takes it it's blowing 50 <laughs> miles an hour and it's like straight air ball I'm like oh that's how you guys play wow. out here like it's not like Venice Beach wind you know how do you adjust to the breeze like yeah this is a win bro like it's mm -hmm. 50 miles it's taking and, the ball <laughs> bro, and it's going so you gotta like shoot like, if you want to shoot right there you gotta shoot over there yeah yeah so I'm like, oh, this is interesting. Like, this is the type of basketball I want to play. Next day I come back, I really get to connect with these kids. I'm like, let's get a broom. And like, shit is stuck. I'm like, oh, we need shovels. We need like picks. And then we start digging the court out of the out of the ground and go to the paint store, start painting a line, start painting the key. I was like, oh, that looks nice. That teal blue. Can we put some blue? Can we put some pink? And next thing you know, there's like. 10, 15 people come help. The, the guy at the hotel is like, had like three people at his restaurant. All of a sudden, he's got like 50 people on his balcony. He's like, yo, you want to stay at our hotel? Like, we got a free room for you. You come stay here. I'm like, I'm spending $300 now. And the result, yes. Yeah, we'll yeah. come to that yeah, hotel. We'll, we'll come to that hotel. We'll save 300 And with a basketball view, like on the court, like my type of wake up. I don't want to wake up, just look at the ocean. I want to look at the court and then look at the ocean. Yeah. So we built our first court, and then it just hit with me. And I, that whole time, VBL was running in LA. I spent two weeks out there. I saw the community get out through a tournament. People came from like five, six different islands on boats. And all of a sudden, I got a hundred people at my inauguration thing. People are performing. The whole culture comes together. Grandma is out there cooking like rice and chicken. Just everybody's eating. Hell yeah. Everybody's cheering. I'm a complete foreigner. Like five days later, I got a free place to stay. I'm at home. Like. And this is the same program. It began as build courts on our walls, and like we've taken that next to the to the jungle of the Philippines, like turn a court out of a uh, old burned down glass factory, and then had to bring it home to Venice, which was known as the Wave Court. That was an NBA 2K. Shout out for not hitting us up or asking for the rights of the artwork. We still out here, NBA 2K. I need to holler at us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, but. Bro, yeah. From that's there, so like that's yeah. where it started. Belize. It began right here, Belize. Yeah, that yeah. teal blue is like is very much in our DNA. Like when you think about the Venice Ball brand, like we're on the Pacific Ocean. This kind of navy teal, you'll see that a lot through our collection and our kind of like inspiration. So um that was the yeah, that was the birth of it. Yeah, I think we've done fifty to hundred courts. Mm -hmm. All the homies that used to work with us now that they're doing their home courts like 15 20 a year you know shout out to trevor shout out to vic like yeah yeah to be for able real to be able to unlock like homies that were just like you guys were just interning out here and yeah now, now you're like 
running your own projects and building your own courts. Like well, that, that's what it's about. You know? Yeah, it's interesting because I remember uh, I think it was the first time I came here, maybe the second or something. But I remember you had us doing courts too. Uh, Which I'm, court we do? I think we were in Watts. That's right. Oh. At the Watts court. Are yeah. The Watts or the Nipsey court? No, mm. I, I think it was Watts. Watts. Yeah. Yeah. And it was Watts. I remember Watts, we were placing yeah. like pieces of like glass into the fr- mosaic into, tile. Yeah, the mo- mosaic tile, tile into the like into like the arc, and Man. and I just, dude, it was such a. F- it was actually a really fun experience, um, because obviously I've never built a court before. I, I've never done anything like that. That's one I'm very proud of. Yeah, and that one was so cool because I remember we went and you kind of we went and saw like the city and stuff, and we see the people that you're building this for. When we went to the True. Watts, like it was like the facility that they had or something. And the Watts Towers, right? Yeah, it's the iconic monument. It's the Eiffel yeah. Tower of yeah. LA, bro. It's like yeah, people don't know. People never go to Watts. They just know the gang culture of Watts. Like mm-hmm. people just like Google like where not to go in LA. They tell you like don't go to Watts. Don't yeah. go to that side of town. And it's it's you know it's like the reality of it is like. The love is everywhere, right? If you come intentionally, like, I've gone to play to the hood, like, since I'm 16 years old. Like, the minute they walk in, they're like, what the fuck you doing here? And then they see me hoop, and they're like, now nah, I'm catching a bang out. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, the one boy can play, man. Like, you family For real. instantly, yeah. right? So I, know, like, I know that feeling, trust me. You know that, right? Yeah. And it's like, you can break the barriers, and this is the magical part of the game. But now, like, when you add a level up to that, when you're, like, building a court, right? And this court is historical where they shot the movie White Man Can't Jump. Yep. White Man Can't Jump 2, you in the movie. Yes, sir. Hey, man, big shout out to you Shit. for getting me in the movie. That's right. Because I think you hit me like super last minute. Like, Three. yo, you yeah. trying to hop in? They got an extra spot for for something. Oh. Boom. Did you shoot at the Watts courts? No, you shot. We did not shoot at the Watts courts. We shot in Huntington Beach. That Watts court is in White Man Can Jump 2 coming out. Trailer came out yesterday. Came out a few days ago. Yes. And they had me do a crazy layup in the movie, bro. Crazy lay in the movie. But the craziest part about that is that that wasn't in the script, right? They wrote a whole script and they're like, I'm calling it like, we need to get a few of my homies in there to make this more authentic. Put in the, uh, the director was like, yeah, let's hit him. Let's write the edit yep. in right live. Like we're going to adjust to the, to the honesty of the culture of the game right the now. The culture. Yeah, bro. And I, I remember I didn't even, I wasn't supposed to do a crazy layup. So I don't even know if I'm allowed to be saying this, but I'm going to say it. Yeah. My part basically was where Jack Harlow and the other main character, they walk into the gym and the camera pans over on the court kind of let to like see who's in the gym or whatever. And my part basically is I'm playing like one on one king of the court on the court that they pan to. And first move, I think I like shift someone and they just wanted me to score a layup, then get the ball back, do another move and hit a jump shot. So there was no crazy layup in the script. I did the crazy layup uh, after the first crossover. And the director was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, wait a minute. Whoa. He was like, do that shit again. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Calmatic. Shout out to Calmatic, bro. He he really let me like hop on the movie set yeah. and like do my own thing, man. Like for real. And I and I really fucked with that. Like that was he, his intention. I think when they reached out to me, they were like, we want to make this movie as authentic as possible, as authentic to streetball now. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, we're going to refer to the 90s classic film, but we want to bring the 2023 version of that. Exactly. So I think, and you know how movie sets are, I'm sure, you know, it's, you're doing the same thing like 20 different times because the production camera angles they switch angles they they move around it was crazy and to witness 20 that shots how many did you make bro i hit like 15 crazy lays in a row and they yeah. were like mind blown they were like there's no way you just did 15 360 behind the back layups and made them all because yeah. mm-hmm. i had to hit the lay and a jumper back to back back damn in one take that's one thing about you, bro. When you really lock in, like, you're locked in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bro. Not many people got that level of, like, that quick. Like, oh, uh, I'm on spotlight. Like, what am I going to do? 
No, yeah. you're he's, right. He's one of the few when he like, when he needs to do something, he's like, oh god, I gotta it, do that. It's gonna happen. Back to back. Okay, okay. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, again. Bro. Okay. Boom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then so later, um, there was another scene where, and you know, I, we could have been filming all these scenes in in the post edit when they're editing this shit. They could have cut all this shit. Like reality, that's just how movies work. Fact. But um. He was like, can anyone in here, like, do some cool dunks or whatever? And I think the rim was, like, a little low. It was, like, maybe 9, 10, or 9, 9. And I was like, yeah, I could throw some shit down. So that that was the director saying that yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. And he just pulled me to the side, and he's like, show me what you could do. So I go up, throw the lob, get up there, slam it. He's like, okay, can you do any, like, any other cool dunks or whatever? And I'm like, shit, I could try to windmill like i could only windmill on a good day when mm-hmm. i'm feeling great and my adrenaline's pumping because right. you know that adrenaline adds like a yes, couple more inches to your vertical About you feel four, me yeah. you know what i'm saying so it's me and the director and i go up throw the lob windmill first try uh, boom slam it he's like yep we need him for this next shot boom so i got in a whole nother shot because i threw some shit down what they put you in a shot for dunking? That white man can't jump. That is crazy. <laughs> yeah. But but makes re- like in all reality shit. though, that could all be cut from the movie. Fact. Yeah, and yeah. It might be. You might or might not see it. it. It might not be in there. But I'm really hoping. I'm hoping the crazy layup is in there though. I I just hope they leave mm. that because. Think about when I started the crazy layups years ago. Mm-hmm. No, nah, it's gonna be bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was getting made fun of, like crazy, from people in my hometown. Yeah. And so I, I can't wait to if it's if it's in the movie, I'm a I'm gonna post a, like a video of and be like, bro, we just hit a crazy lay in a fucking in movie. movie. And one of if not the most iconic like basketball fan. I hope I really hope that they're doing a good job in this post production I, I everything think, that they did because it's like Yeah. I think they um That's a tough act to follow. I mean Wesley it is. Snipes, it is. Woody Harrelson. Especially because Jack my boy E five still ain't seen the movie. I can't believe Especially because th- Jack had never seen, played. How many times have you seen did you see the movie before you went there? <sighs> I haven't even seen it. <laughs> <dog>. <laughs> what? You ain't seen the movie? I haven't either, but I, gotta, oh, I, I can't believe you haven't. Yo, yo, how'd yo, you yo, go? Yo, how'd you the go podcast there without right it? now? Everybody is watching this. Go watch White Man Can't Jump tonight, or you can <laughs> not watch the rest of this interview. Yeah. This is insane. No, I I'm definitely gonna watch it. Why did you not watch? Watch the original before you went, bro. I just it was like a super. It was like a last minute thing. I couldn't like, I don't know, bro. You know how busy the schedule be getting. I don't. I don't watch movies the way it is. I don't want to hear the (laughs) excuse. You're you're you are you are the white man that couldn't jump before, so you gotta watch. No, you're right. Nice. (laughs) No, you're right. You're right. Forget about LeBron breaking the world Uh, record. Nope, not forgetting that. I will definitely be watching yeah. that. No, I I definitely need to watch it. Um, but I I will say one thing, Cal Matic yeah. is on top of shit. Yeah, he is a legit like director. I mean, he studied he studied the game. He studied from the greats, and he recognizes it. And I think it was very important for him. Like he was adamant about saying like we need to put Venice Ball in this movie. He's like it won't be authentic to basketball culture unless we put Venice Ball. That's why they hit me up, and they were like. Who do we need to put in this movie? How do we highlight your league? Like, they were really like serious, and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. like really, like yeah. It's well, a I mean, fact. so you I know. think that's good because a lot of times, I don't, if you watch basketball movies, you know how like sometimes everyone fucking sucks at basketball in the movie, and it just yeah, doesn't feel real. And that's kind of what I was thinking, pulling up to it, mm-hmm. because like I've seen Jack Harlow hoop before, yeah, yeah. and I'm like, man, I. Like, can he really pull this off as the main character? Mm-hmm. And he was definitely in the lab, bro. He wasn't working. He, he wasn't like working. they had him yeah. and the other main character. They yeah, were serious, yeah. they were in the lab, like for real training. They had trainers on site right. putting them through different moves while we're shooting a different scene that they're not in. Mm-mm. Like it was crazy. But one thing that I gotta say that was funny as hell is uh, I hit a crazy lay for one of the takes for this angle and somebody walked in like in the way of seeing it 
and it was like a perfect take or whatever. Oh. And Cal Maddox was like, man, what the fuck, man? You can't be walking in front of the camera. That was crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'll never forget that shit. But Cal, shout out Cal Maddox, man. That was crazy. Shout out Jack Harlow. Um, oh, my boy Sadiq Bay was in there. Shout out yeah. to Sadiq. Plays for the Detroit Pistons. Zach Andrews is out there. All the Zach home. Andrews. Um, man, it was... Everybody. Good yeah, vibes. I, I want to go back before we, we wrap on that topic of you guys coming to Watts, right? This I think it was like a monumental court because, yeah, it wasn't that movie. Mm-hmm. When I put up to Watts, when we launched every Christmas, we do a project called Toys in the Hood where we do like a big toy drive, like party, like influencer game in Venice. And then we bring all the toys to Watts, for like load up car loads. And eventually it became bus loads, right? We'll get to the hoop bus in a minute, but. Like, when I pulled up to Watts, right, I Googled, like, oh, what are the worst neighbors in it? They're like, Watts. So I started going to Imperial Courts. Then I went to Nickerson Garden the next year. And then I discovered this court. And I, did, I didn't put one and two together at first. But I'm like, I'm looking at this backboard. The rim is like this. There was one hoop on the court, but the thing is bent up. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's got it's got like a blood kind of like West Side yeah like just tag on the on the back when I'm like oh shit and like and there's like a little hole in the fence to kind of climb up in there so shoot I meet a kid and I'm like man this and they're like I look around I'm like this is where white man can jump with shot they're like yeah I'm like this is dope three years later or five maybe seven years later I go meet the pastor and I'm like can we build a court in this thing? Cause like when he said build courts, no walls, a lot of the projects is like court renovations. But yeah. like I proud myself when, when we pull up, there's no courts. When we leave, it's a full court. Right. And that court, was, court was one of the only court in the pandemic that was open. And they were running every day through the whole pandemic. Like, you know how they yep. locked down, removed all the rims. Like that court, we spent, three months there. There was over 300 volunteers. Like I, I counted like somewhere like 10,000 hours of combined hours of all volunteers, bro. Like we carved with like a jigsaw <laughs> hammer and chiseled the asphalt. And then inside the asphalt, instead of painting the line, we, we mosaic tiled the game line, right? In honor of Simon Rodia, who built these Watts towers. This guy spent a lifetime building a tower that are recycled trash and recycled materials. So we're looking right at the Watts towers. We're building this court. Everybody's joining in, like guys from all types of hoods, Bloods, Crips, like people like you, people are like flying in, <laughs> international people, Italians, like French people, and like all of a sudden we in Watts and like we standing late and they're like, you better get out before it gets dark. And I'm mm-hmm. like, we building the court right here. And like, yeah, the OGs from the block is coming in and they're joining in. And we spent three months building this court and now this is a court that's cultivated so many tournaments, so many peaceful matches. So, it's such so a, many arguments yeah. get solved on the basketball court. And mm-hmm. the fact that yeah. it's it's in a church, right? It's a holy ground. It's a white man can't jump historical court. Yeah. You're looking at the Watts Towers. And it's like, you know, when I look at projects like this, I, and to think that the ball is bouncing every day at a place that, like, there was no ball bouncing before we came is, yeah. is a special feeling, man. Yeah, like, this th- is where their gratitude really comes in. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a beautiful thing because – the game of basketball, the rock, the ball, the basketball has brought so many people together. You know what I'm saying? Like you just said, French people, whatever, any, any, you know what I'm saying? You, by building this court, brought so many people in the community together, which is like super dope, mm-hmm. super fire. It doesn't get real in that. It's unscripted. It's raw. I mean, you know, things get settled. It might get some beef, but, like, that's just part of life. Like, that's part of hoops, go, man. You're going to go and figure it out, and you come back and do it again. And the court has evolved. It's been repainted three times. We've added more art to the, to, to the fencing. It was that Watt style, like, fencing where, like, the, the, the picks are facing in, so you can't get out. So we chopped, yeah. we chopped the whole fence up and created like hearts and like love symbols all around it. So it's just like, yeah, you know, think, thinking back, I mean, that was like four years back, you know, it's, you know, right after that, you were there at the Nipsey court when we did an honor, a court in Nipsey. In honor that was, of Nipsey and that the, is a beautiful court. Yeah. The Nipsey you hustle there, you court. You put your hands on that, bro. Man, I got a couple, couple shots up, a you couple got, swishes out there. You swished it up. That's bro. a beautiful court, man. When we came to that court, one of the rim was like 11 and a half feet. One of the rim was like crooked, tilted forward. So we had to like 
adjust the whole backboards, redo everything, and then honor this man legacy. So it's it's awesome to be able to be a vessel to the growth of the game, right? Like mm-hmm. I always put that in perspective. It's like yeah, this is a hundred and thirty year old basketball uh, sport. Like this is a place, a birthplace, like Springfield, Massachusetts, Dr. Nate Smith, hung two peach basket basketball was born hundred and thirty years ago. Like mm-hmm. it's our grandfather's like life. So you're like, wow bro, like there's so much to do with the game. Like it's still so much to There's do. So now, much more. Now we're traveling on a hoop bus, traveling basketball time machine across the, across the world. And mm-hmm. we need to touch on the hoop bus, bro, because another life changing experience that I had with you was going on tour from Los Angeles all the way to Washington, D.C. with the hoop bus during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. To try to, you know, bring awareness and try to, you know, bring people to get bring communities together. Mm-hmm. I mean, how many basketball courts were renovated or built during that tour? I mean, th- we can get to that, but like that tour was crazy, bro. That was life changing for mm-hmm. me and every everybody, everybody on the tour. On, well, we had a whole 30 piece team that just put their faith and trust and. That the bus was even going to make it there, man. I mean, mm-hmm. it's like, dude, we got to remember, like, this is a bus that's been collecting dust in the desert for 10 years before we bought, uh, bought it. And they were like, the tanks are expired, but they look great. Yeah. So you should be able to ride for another 100,000 miles. But we don't know. Like, we're buying that from a yeah. second seller. So like, break, yeah. break down, though, for every – break it down for everybody listening. Before we get into, like, what the tour was and everything and what we did – what is the hoop bus? The hoop bus is the ultimate basketball traveling machine. Is the, I mean, people have I've mentioned it, and I, I I'll quote that from what people said is like the greatest invention since the peach basket. I I, I referred back to Dr. James Naismith. If you youngsters, yeah, I watched in this podcast right now don't know about there's a birthplace when somebody hung a peach basket, and now we brought the courts on the move right like we got a hoop in the front a hoop in the back the basketball leads the way the people come together along the way and this is a this is a school this, bus this is a school a bus. yellow school bus this is an educational yeah this is a bus that's been collecting the desert a lot of these buses are getting off the road because they're they're not passing inspection of some type and then these things eventually are going to become obsolete eventually they'll put you know probably like electric buses into mm-hmm. the world and now we're riding with a, a cng bus you know natural <laughs> gas so it's a little bit better on the environment and yeah we we the whole mission of it is just bring people together and inspire people to you know be the student not the master we're going to school every day right we let the hoop lead the way and see what what kind of adventure and what kind of teachings like yeah. the, the game will bring you right because yeah. it's Generally, like the hoop bus will bring you in situations where, like, you're not meeting the traditional basketball players. I've seen dozens of people that have never even shot a basketball before that made their first shot on the hoop bus, and they might be 60 or 7 years old, or it might be a three year old kid. That's so, so fire, bro. So, so, so to be able to unlock that, it's like you never shot a basketball before. I need you to make that shot. Yeah. You gotta make right it right now. So, you said the, the learning thing is that kind of why you decided to go with a school bus over having like a coach bus or something like that? I mean, it's just like I think it's also the nostalgia of just like I didn't get to ride the hoop bus, I got there a little bit later. Actually, yeah, not a, a, yeah, we would travel like when I came 16, 17, but to go to basketball games. So, mm-hmm. I guess it's the connection to like the only time I ever rode the school bus was to go to basketball. Mm-hmm. So it is like the excitement of riding that bus. Like I didn't get picked up from school to go to bus. But like when we had big games, we get on that bus, the whole team's on there. We turn it up. Hey, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It's music. like you, you pumped up. You're like ready for game it day, might, baby. The music might sound, not sound like nothing, but you're like, I'm going to a game. I got my teammates. We on the bus. So like to keep this basketball adventure going, it's kind of sometimes like it's a hard realization. You're like, I'm 30 years old. I love the game, and this is, like, as good as it gets. I'm like, it got to get better than that. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. We could bring it further. Like, I got a bunch of, like, broken hoop dreams homies that's like, man, like, we we can do more with this game of basketball. And so that yeah. that's how the vision unlocked, and then people gravitated. 
and then Kobe died, and then we dedicated the bus to Kobe. Then we did Kobe pilgrimage through five blizzards to Chicago, and we built another court in Chicago. And then when we get to Chicago, people loved it so much. They're like, we need a Who bus in Chicago. A year later, the Who bus Chicago is born. Chicago bus is traveling to Cleveland. We're building two courts, LA bus is traveling through an NBA commercial through Atlanta and then the both buses are playing in the middle of a blizzard in the snow full court in downtown Cleveland in the middle of the hood it's just like John Morant pulls up Terry Rozier is there like you're able to create like moments that I could never ever dream of and you know and it's like I'm a complete stranger but then I'm in a new city and I'm family I'm hitting I'm eating food at mom's house, grandmom's house. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm standing on somebody's couch. Like, it's like, this is the type of love that you receive instantly. And it's like, you know, that's, that feeling is so addictive and so rewarding. And it's like, it just never gets boring, right? It's like the same game you play. It's like, okay, basketball can get a little repetitive. Yeah. And yeah. So and you- sometimes it gets, you know, like, okay, but. I don't think I've never had a day where like our guys like kind of boring like who bust. Like, yeah, you can get on the wheel and you don't know. We know we have a destination. How are we gonna get there? Yeah, it's a whole other ball game. I know? think it's cool because you get to like learn so many stories. Like for example, you've known Tristan for years now, or, and you've known me for years now, but you never saw where we came from. So even the bus brought you to where we came from, and you got to experience something like that. We took you to the most popular way. like diner that we go to and it's stuff yeah. so you get to learn everything and really be there it's not just hearing about it. you get to go to all these places that like you'd never go never. otherwise yeah and meet so many different people yeah so now i think we need to touch a little bit on the hoop bus tour we went on because that was like an eye-opening life-changing experience for me um you know we hopped on well we got a sprinter van we had you know i'm saying um i want to make sure you're comfortable because when i told you it was (laughs) like we travel on a hoop bus and there's 15 people traveling and there's like a bunch of random people you never heard i'm like i don't know if tristan gonna like that one but i'm like (laughs) and then i called it was like what if we get uh t a a sprinter van and then i came back with that idea it was like yeah i think that's the one like that's the one, bro. AC. I mean, it's 110 degrees. We're looking at the road map. It's like we got to go to Phoenix and Texas. It's 110 with no AC. Yeah. And, yeah, the hoop bus on the road in the hot August summer, it, it could be a little rough. Yeah, and that first stop was – um, where was the first stop? It was hot as the first might have been Arizona. Met Phoenix, no, Phoenix, no, Arizona. Um, well, we did Palm Springs Palm at the high noon. Palm Springs, bro. High oh noon. Oh my god! I remember hooping, like walking out of the because there was already people at the court ready for us because we already had you know courts set up and shit along the mm-hmm. way, kinda. Um, I just remember hopping out of that Sprinter van from the AC, <laughs> yeah. going to like the desert heat. Yeah. I'm like, there is no way I'm no, about to get some buckets out here. I can barely breathe right now. Barely. Just walking. It's, it's, it's the desert. Like, you're talking about an oasis in the desert. Palm Spring, I think it was like 108. And it's 12 o'clock. Like, <laughs> could not get there at the worst time. But it's like 100 kids waiting for us there. So you're mm-hmm. like, uh, everybody's like, yeah. Like, you're like, uh, all right, cool. Adrenaline kicks in. Yeah. Give me a tall glass of Gatorade or water. And you're like, Came we got it. Then we got to do and it. And we had a squad. Like, we like what, who was on the squad? Sutherland. Serge. It's big Serge he, playing that game. Serge was playing. Um, Jordan, Sutherland. Uh, Duncan all over the place. Who else was with us? I don't even remember. We had a good group of guys, though. I remember watching that, just watching the tour as a viewer, because I obviously wasn't there. And that was potentially some of the best energy I've ever seen you have on the court in in videos like the crowds were just there every single time uh, there was always someone there talking shit the <laughs> the trash talker titles were coming in it was it was <laughs> a crazy time man and then and that's like when we really took those like 5v5 basketball runs mm-hmm. to the next level bro it inspired so many like, like whole look now wave of everything look like, now how many people are doing tour like it was like that was 
that was like sparking a nation. I mean, people were like, like literally feeding for basketball. Most courts are still locked. Like there's only like, we had to just like dig around town. Like what courts are actually open? Yeah. Most courts were like locked or rims off or like get out of our neighborhood type thing. So yeah. it's like. And it's yeah. kind of crazy because too, at, at the M- at the, uh, at that time, <laughs> the NBA was like kind of like in a shut down process and it was really weird and like there was no mm. fans in the audience so or anything. Strange. So it was like you guys were pulling in more viewers from these five v five runs than some mm. of these NBA games. People Fact. just wanted to see basketball. They wanted to see a crowd the again. Authentic way. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. watching it with no one in the stands, that's not what we want to see. We want to see the energy from everyone. That's fact. And you guys get energized off the crowd. That is that's yeah. basketball. Yeah, no, it was that. that was man. To give people like like a background context, that was the time where George Floyd had just died, yep. right? Had been murdered, which mm-hmm. is like a very emotional and just like kind of traumatizing experience, right? Where people really like kind of took it upon themselves to take it to the streets, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so the city, like people will start protesting to another extent, right? Yeah. And my bus was parked on Abbott Kinney, and that's the day where like people was like, do not go to this protest. They're going to burn the whole street. These guys are like, I'm like, bro, like, this is the block. The bus is going to be parked there. We're going to have 30 balls unloaded like we do at every protest. Mm-hmm. And, like, we were always first on this scene. When Santa Monica started burning in flames, like, I took the bus by myself straight into the heat of fire. And I'm, like, throwing basketballs, hitting people chest pads. They're, like, looting. They got, like, some fucking refrigerator. They had <laughs> AutoZone. They, like, they got carburetors. And, like, bro, bro, take a shot. And, like, they're, like, oh, let me drop – Shit, let me I put down loot. this TV. <laughs> let me think. So I just like. <laughs> hey, he said, "Let me drop the shit I just stole real quick <laughs> yeah, to hit a jumper." Bro, like literally, bro. Oh, like, man. It was chaos. Like I'm pulling up at all the looting spots and like just bust on the scene and just man. putting some music and just like, okay, like let's take this into perspective. Like, do you really need this? I'm looking at people coming up with the most random shit and just like somehow I'm amused. I'm angry. It's like it's a multiple things uh, multiple feelings when people are gravitating to it right people are angry but it's like there's there's people are coming on the bus and they're sharing stories and like i'm driving i'm trying to focus on the road there's like thousands of people in the way and then like people are sharing and they're pouring in i'm like oh man like this is it's like a podcast there's like a therapy like Mm -hmm. session happening on the bus and all of a sudden Mm -hmm. i got 30 people on the bus and i'm like how do you guys get on the bus i got people on the roof of the bus yep 30, 40, 50 protests later, I'm meeting people with all type of testimonies. Like the cops stole my thing. I was throwing a party in the middle of the streets. They they kidnapped my bus. Next thing you know, the LAPD, I'm in downtown in front of the Staples Center, like home with Kobe. Like, and we're driving down. Like, cops like, let me escort you this way. Like, we're going to escort you back to the freeway because this I was making a reverse after like a 17-hour protest. And next thing you like, we've been watching you on camera. They surround me. They're pointing shotguns at me. They're impounding the car impounding wow. the car and I'm go Psh. the bus I, I post the thing like yeah bro they got me in handcuffs like like to the ground like type of thing like you're going to jail like reckless driving they hit me with all types of charges like like you had people on the roof we've been watching you for seven hours I was like why don't you guys say something because I'm hitting at every roadblock this cops I'm hitting them with chest passes like you know shoot hoops not guns they're like uh and they was like, yeah, yeah, you know, even if they shoot a brick, if people are cheering, because like you, you're manifesting that you're not a racist, that mm-hmm. you like actually care about the, the this is a meaningful process. Yeah, it just like it bring the human out of you, like you yeah. Know? And so they block us, they impound the car, they hit me with all types of violation. Next thing you know, post to post, hashtag free to who bus. Everybody repost free the hoop bus, free the, free hoop, the hoop bus, bus. free the hoop bus. Next thing you know, like I got the LAPD PR department saying, it's like, yo, we're getting like mad heat. Like, can you come pick up this bus? We'll drop the charges. You just have to pay the impound fee, which is like $1,500. I'm like, I go to GoFundMe, it's like, free the hoop bus, 1500 Like, was in like minutes, bro. We hit like twenty five. We got $5,000 in the bank account. I'm like, shit, we, the people just freed the bus, bro. Yeah. Like, and then I'm outside, and I'm just like, all right, like, this is war. <laughs> like, next day, we're, like, hitting a protest event. It's 5,000 people. Everybody's out there. Like, Trey Song's, like, fucking 
I don't know, dozen celebrities. I don't, I, f- I forget. It's been so many. Yeah. But then we hit the street and people were really gravitated and people were like, oh, this is like a symbol of the movement. And so it was another level of responsibility. I was like, okay, Black Lives Matter, what does it mean? Like, it's like bigger than social justice. It's bigger than race. It's, it was like, it was, it was just like, okay, this is this is what we're meant to be doing right now. Yeah. Like, we're meant to bring people together. We're meant to inspire people. And, like, what's the biggest protest of all protests? Like, Washington, D.C., that's where we're going. Yeah. And everybody was like, yeah, we're going. So everybody was like, put their faith, including yourself, and, like, we're going. Sparked the movement, inspired so many people along the way. Built a court in Dallas and the project that had, like, same thing again, like, one hanging rim. And all of a sudden, we got... Why fifteen hundred people at the court opening? Next thing you Crazy. know, we're in the hood in Washington D.C. doing the MLK court with Steve Francis. Like I have a dream on the giant. Like it's updated on Google Maps. Like if you go to Oxen Run Park right now, it's like official. Like that's I super have fire. a dream. Like we had a dream to go across America with no money and just a dream and some Puma kicks and dreamers. Like we were passing out J Cole up and down. That was when the J Coles were hot. Like, yeah, we, we were giving out a lot of shoes. I feel like that tour, it was, um, it, we brought so many people together, mm-hmm. no matter what your skin color is, no matter what the hell you believe in every court that we were going to along that road trip, hundreds of people from the community just coming in, and it was just the feeling that you have, like when you're involved with something like that is just like, I'll never forget it, man. Mm-hmm. I'll yeah. never. It's powerful, bro. Like the game of basketball. Well, it brings you like a sense of hope having all of these people together, just all collectively mm-hmm. bonding with one thing, which is just basketball. Yeah. Yeah, but and and a deeper message. Right? Yeah. It's no. Like, exactly. Yeah, you know, it's like what, especially now, now during it's bigger that. Bigger than basketball. Like now we're exactly. playing, but you're playing with a, a real meaning and a real mm-hmm. intent to why you're here, right? Like, and that's what yeah. like makes that. Like, then you gotta really step it up, and you're like, okay, man, I'm playing. Like, I'm gonna dunk. Like my life depends on this. Like I'm dunking for justice. Like, mm-hmm. it's like I'm dunking for the people that I, I can't breathe right now. Like, like I'm playing. Like you know, like you really putting all this. Like this. Like, this it's a mixed emotion. It's like definitely because it was it was such an emotional time for Bro, literally everyone. And here's the thing: is not a lot of people know this. Well, I mean, a lot of people know this, but like people don't know what I was going through on that tour. Being on tour, not being in my hometown, and seeing my hometown get oh, burned fire. down. I remember that we were in New Orleans or something. Bro. Every night was like, I'm texting my family. I'm like, yo, please be safe. My city is being burnt down to the ground right now. Back home and I'm on tour. And I'm like, damn, I wish I could, you know, be back home and shit. But I was so dedicated to this tour. And then that kind of like tied into the Mm -hmm. tour. Like, yo, we need to we need to be in Kenosha. Yeah, we need to be in Kenosha. So. I think it brought a lot of healing. right? Well, and for the people, for the people that don't understand the reason our city was being burnt down was because of the Jacob Blake situation, not the George Floyd situation. Yeah, that and that happened. I remember it was months after Well, I I was checking my phone while we were on tour Mm -hmm. and I'm seeing this video go viral of this whole situation. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, bro, this there's no way this just happened in my hometown, bro. Mm -hmm. There's no way. I and know. I remember telling you about it and you're like, yeah, well, let's let's wait and kind of see what happens. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Because we were we already had the route to go to Washington, D.C. Mm. And we were almost there. We we're almost there. Yeah. You know, so we in New Orleans at the and time. I'm telling Nick, I'm like, bro, we got to reroute the bus to pull up to Kenosha and do something for like my community. Mm-hmm. Because, bro, that shit was so sad, bro. Places that but I, I think I had we rushed you know, there, right? It was not the time. They were not. They were. They were angry and like rightfully so. Yeah, so like very. The, people, people gotta let the anger. It, out. I it mean, was in burning the, cars. Like people. Are it was dying. in the heat of things. Cause I I remember being there. I was watching all these live streams. It it really was a crazy time. I went to some of the protests and everything. It it was it was really my old work got completely burned down. It 
does it doesn't even exist. <laughs> it was just destroyed. It's horrible. I mean, you saw what was it? The Maybe right after the tour, you were like, "All right, we're gonna bring the hoop bus to Kenosha, right. and we're gonna do something." And we still and gotta honor and build that court. By we the s- way. we still yeah. have to we still have to do a court in Kenosha, hundred yeah. percent. And we will. I know we will. I'm I'm very certain that we eventually when our schedules aren't so crazy That'd with all star awesome. weekend coming up there, um but man you saw it we went to a car dealership oh and yeah there, there's <laughs> there's a no more, bro. yeah there's a hundred cars in the parking lot Straight but rest. they're burnt to a crisp and there is nothing left but the frame mm-hmm. of the car Taylor chips it was cri- like the gl- even the glass was melted off yeah. of these cars like it was it was unbelievable. Yeah, it was it was such a it was a hard time for um for our community mm-hmm. and so thank you for the for world, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Bringing the hoop bus down to Kenosha because that um I mean, we had 100 kids at the park, put them through a little clinic, messed around, ran some fives of them and and that brought a lot of light to those kids because a lot of those kids were scared, bro. Mm-hmm. They didn't know what the hell They're was going on. Out and it it really it really was scary because I I know you were on tour but man and I remember the next day remember we were doing a march with Jacob Blake's uncle yep from Kenosha to Milwaukee bro yep. I can't bro, believe you we guys did, did through that. the night it was a forty eight hour march thirty five miles my body's still sore from that like mm, we I marched and that. probably laced up about like. Fifteen thousand buckets along the way. I'm, I probably, <laughs> 15, I probably buckets. marched like five miles straight, just doing micking drills, bro. Mm-hmm. In the back of the bus, Tyler and I, bro, like, just like, bro, the like, and drill, bro. It's like that was, you know, while Nico was doing a full DJ set, he did like a twenty-eight hour DJ set, just keeping people pumped and motivated. Mm-hmm. People were dropping like flies. We begin with like five hundred people, and I went by looking the bus. It was like. There's like probably sixty people kind of like cranking up on each other, like just passed out. And it was, it was, it was a <laughs> freezing time. I remember it was really cold out too at that time. It was. Yeah. Yeah, we were driving just going through like cow fields and just like fuck lives, man. And it's like, <laughs> really like, it's like it's dead, but like we like this. That was probably one of the most powerful moment of oh, the yeah. tour, like meeting the family and hearing those testimonies and um and just being able to be like. Okay, like we, we will we will dedicate our our bus to this moment, and we will bring everything. We will travel with the DJ. Like, yeah, there was the element of like fun that I think that. I mean, not to take anything lightly, but it's no. But people need the they they need the cheer. Like, yeah. if you need like if you want to motivate yourself, there needs to be something that just like kind of kind of keeps you keeps your it just keeps you going. Up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, bro. And my even my dad, bro. My dad pulled up. My whole family pulled up to the little event we did. Yep. Bro, my dad got a dunk on the hoop bus. <laughs> yeah, my pops did. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? My mom was there. My dog so was there. Tea, bro. Man, we had all of our families out there. That was bro. such a beautiful thing. Um, well, shit. I think we can wrap it up there, man. We've been chopping it up for a minute. Um, I know we still have so much more to mm-hmm. talk. There's so many more stories we haven't even talked about. I'll so see many. you next week in Utah, bro. Man, we're going to be, yeah, we're going to be Salt Lake City, Utah for NBA All-Star Weekend. I'm very excited for that. Lots of podcast episodes, maybe with one of your favorite NBA players will be coming soon. Mm-hmm. Who knows? So Hell stay yeah. tuned for that. No. I want to give a big shout out to Nick right here at Venice Ball. And his other Instagram is Organico, cool. right? Or the hoop bus. Or follow any one of your favorite hoopers or your non favorite hoopers. Dig in because the next basketball star might be coming to an Instagram near you or to a town near you. <laughs> you never know, man. Slow, I bro. um I uh thank you for letting us come here. Yep. And doing the podcast right out, here. Man. This was a beautiful thing. I am your host, Tristan Jass, with the Everyone's Different podcast, and my co-host, Young Trench, and uh, Nick. Yeah, Nico. And we out. We'll see you guys next episode. Love you guys. Peace. Peace. Peace.